This is a 1929 Grand Page, model 615. It's the middle. They made a 612, I believe, and a bigger one, eight something. This is the middle. It's the top of the middle class. What I mean is it's got the wire wheels, the interior, there's some gingerbread in there, a footrest, a uh, place to put your blanket and what have you. Uh, window blinds and uh, different things. Okay. Okay, now it's a six cylinder engine. It has four speed transmission. <clears throat> I put an overdrive in it so that we can run it a little bit faster on the highways. We look at the engine here. I, oh, I had all kinds of things to say before I turned the camera on. There it is. It's got hydraulic brakes, first year. That's it, four speed transmission. It runs by uh, ignition coil. It, the points in this, I think, are the same distributor points that's on a 50 something Chevy, 51 Chevy or something. They use them points all those years. Points and condenser. Uh, interchange might say on the thing itself, on the uh, distributor. The hubcaps were made in two pieces originally. This was the skin over top of them. What I did was I saved the best one that, from looking out here and then I had six cast and I machined them in chrome plated so they're solid. Here's a lock. Key should be in the pocket on the side by the door. It locks this tire so you can't just take the nut off and uh, go with it. On the overdrive in here, there's a lever it's a little pull thing right here it says OD very poor thing anyhow when you pull this out it locks it in standard gear race gear the overdrive will not work now under here there's a little switch right in the fact that slides sideways and it's the dash lights the other switch under here, the pull switch, I thought was the winter one. I don't see it working. Well, anyhow, that's what's under here. One's for the wind, windshield wiper and the other is for the overdrive. If you turn the overdrive off it won't shift now when you start out with this thing you have to have this out to back up if you do not have it locked in standard drive it'll freewheel and it won't back up which is scary so you start it up and you start going down the road you leave up on the throttle or before you even get to the road, you push this in. Now when you go down the road and you run along at about 28 mile an hour to 30 mile an hour, if you listen real close, you'll hear a click. And the solenoid will say, oh, we can go into overdrive. So you leave off of the th throttle and you feel a very little clunk and it will shift into overdrive. 
and the way you go. Now, when you start to slow down at 28 mile an hour, it will free wheel. So if you're going down a long hill, that's not a very good idea. So what you do at the top of the hill, you tramp it, you, you can't be going over 30, 30 mile an hour, 35 mile an hour. You take, and there's a button under here, it's a push button, a little, it's a kill switch. It's right here, you push up on it. You put the throttle to the floor, you hit this kill switch for just an instant, and you'll feel it go into standard drive, and you jerk this out. It doesn't always want to come out right. You may have to do it a couple times. And then it'll stay in standard gear. But if you're also then, when you're back into overdrive, you're going along and you come to hill going up, and it slows down, slows down. You leave up on the throttle and you push that kill sweat just for an instant. What it does, it kills the ignition and stops, and then it will shift into standard gear by itself. When you get to the top of the hill, leave up on the throttle, you'll hear it click if you're going over 30 mile an hour, and then you're back into overdrive. Uh, I hope that's plain. It's, 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 uh, probably miss something but if not at least it's a start it will not back up if it's in overdrive <clears throat> it gives you a funny feeling when the free wheels like that and under if you're running along with the overdrive lever pushed in under 30 mile an hour it will free wheel it have no hold back That's it. I don't know why the windshield wiper doesn't work. It should. And the ignition switch over here has a lock on it. <clears throat> it locks the... Right here, it locks the steering wheel. And then you... Unlock it. And then you can use this switch here. This switch is the one that works it. This just locks it so that... That won't work. Uh, that's about it. For that part. Don't go crazy trying to get the driving lights to work because they're not hooked up. I haven't got around to it. That's a round to it. Uh, in this, <clears throat> this is not the radio. This is just a false grill in here that makes it look like the radiator. The radiator is behind it. It has shock absorbers on it, but they only work one way. They don't work like the modern shocks two ways. They work just one way. Uh, and you want to, <clears throat> the overdrive is separate from the transmission. If you check the fluid, you've got to check the overdrive, check the transmission. They, they don't always leak the same. Oh, I know you can. Oh, there's a heavy hook. Under here is, a, if you get around the other way, Matt, you can see this. I have... On most of my cars, I have shut-off switches. Here's one right here that shuts the main power off. I never leave them with the power because you never know with the old wiring. And I have a new oil filter thing here that was remanufactured just recently, and you put unscrew it and put a modern filter inside it's in on the shelf i'd like to get it in there where i can change the oil filter now the oil gauge is right here you don't have to pull a stick it's on the on the float see that 
right there. Mm -hmm. So you don't, don't want to squirt the water hose there. And you can tighten the timing chain up by loosening this and do this. I haven't done it. It was a new timing chain and we overhauled it. I don't know how many miles is on it. 10,000 maybe or so. The oil goes in here. There you go. Uh, other than that, and uh, the fan needs greased every once in a while. It started squeaking when we were in Tiffin last year. It scared the heck out of me because we drove there. Okay, that's it. This is the starter switch here. This is a, a, the parking brake emergency brake. And to put it in, this is a four speed transmission. To put it in first gear, you have to pull this lever up. And then the gear pattern is on the, the knob. Uh, yeah, there, you get it out. It's not holding. So to, now this start, this will, if you go straight down, it'll go in second gear, and then third, and then fourth. So to get in first gear, you pull this up and then it'll go in the, it won't go in now because the gears are not meshed. But anyhow, you have to pull that there. It won't even go over. You, you got to do that and then it'll go over further. And then of course we got our air conditioning right here. It opens that little In their clock, it has got the grandbrothers' heads on it, on the clock in the mirror. Mom bought that. She paid more for that clock than I paid for the car from a friend. Pap Kerrigan and George Hinchcliffe did the upholstery work. George put the headliner in, Pat Kerrigan made the, the, the seats and stuff. <clears throat> There's uh, something supposed to go in here. I don't know whether it's uh, to hold matches or whatever, but <clears throat> there was supposed to be cigarette, like a cigarette, uh, what do you call them? There were you, uh, ashtrays. There's two ashtrays that go in that I never put them in. They're in the basement on each side. One on each side here. This one's right here. And here's a footrest. You can have it one way or the other. And the, the side windows crank one way or another, I'm not going to do it because I haven't done it. They might stick. I think they go down. Oh, and the windshield goes out. So that you got more air. You loosen up a couple wing nuts here and just push the bottom out. Oh, the, the serial number. When I bought the car, <clears throat> I went out <laughs> self-incriminating. I went out to get the title transfer. And I had the title, and it was so, supposed to have been for this car, but I couldn't find the numbers. So what do I do? I make a number plate and attach it to the firewall. I go to the JP, which he was very, very much on the ball. He said, this is the number, and this is the tracing. I said, yes, sir. He said, you found it under the floor mat, in the back seat on the right hand side. I says, yes, sir. He get fixed out my title. I come home, I lift it up, and there the baby is right there. The original body number and plates. So I have two numbers, one here and one under the hood. This is the right one.
<clears throat> oh, this tail light, this car only had one tail light. I found the tail light of Hershey and I found the bracket of Hershey, but the brackets were that side. So Jones had strength modified it and we got two tail lights so we can have to it. I didn't get to turn some of those on yet, but never give up hope. See if I got a break button. They said what what I do is this this she, uh, card I have in the in the pocket and before I take it out I check off the things that I do uh, oil water transmission overdrive differential brake fluid, air, fire extinguisher, very important, a little bit of fuse, uh, tools, grease, grease the distributor, that's important, fan shaft, that's important, oil, starter, I don't know what that is, battery water, okay. Spark plugs are champion C4. A colder plug would be C2. The setting is 25 thousandths. H1. I don't know what that is. Can't see it. Six quarts of oil. I use 10W30. And I changed it to 30,000. 35 miles. But you never want to leave the battery exposed you always want to make sure you put this board back in because if you don't the acid will come up and eat the bottom of the seat out and there's a finger hole in there that i usually plug with a with a piece of paper a napkin or something okay and under the seat there's some tools and there's some spare parts there's a solenoid for the overdrive, the distributor cap, tire tools, jack, spark plugs, packing, what have you. Good deal. Have a ball.